So many people want to visit Meteora as a day trip from Athens. But what is Meteora exactly and is it worth your time and money? Well, that's what we're answering in today's video. Many of you have left me comments these last days under my videos asking where you can find information on my tours in Athens. Well, it's very easy. Hit me up on Instagram or write me an email and I will tell you all about it. So let's talk about Meteora. Meteora is a small area located in northern Greece, four hours and a half away from Athens, next to the city of Kalabaka. It's famous for its monasteries built on top of these crazy rock formations. Meteoron in Greek means something like suspended in the air and when you look at these monasteries i think it's a pretty accurate description all right so now that you know what meteora is let's see how you can get there from athens you can rent a car of course and drive yourself but it's a long ride and you're gonna pay a lot of money on fuel and highway tolls so unless you plan to go to multiple spots in northern greece as part of a three or four days road trip i would just stick to a one day organized package by a tour operator and and guess what a few days ago i went on that very tour so that i can show you exactly how it goes so the first step is getting to kalabaka by train you don't have to buy the train tickets yourself you get them emailed by the company after you book the package and of course i'm gonna leave you down below the link to book this tour the central station of athens is called larisa station and it's located three kilometers or two miles north of the acropolis to get there you can take the metro it's on the red line which is directly connected to Sindarma and Acropoli or if you're coming from Monastiraiki or Thysio you'll have to switch lines at Omonia and don't worry the Athens metro is a very safe place even in Omonia. A metro ticket costs around two euros valid for one hour and a half or you can also get to the train station by cab and that will be around 10-15 euros. Now once you've entered the train station you will see this screen. Look for Kalabaka this is how it's written in Greek and you'll see which track number the train will arrive at it's usually track number eight but yeah better double check that on the screen now it's pretty common in greece to have big strikes during which all trains stop operating and guess what that's exactly what happened to me on the day i went on this tour so what happens in that case well you still go to the train station but instead of entering the actual station you hop on a bus which is waiting for you on the opposite side of the road with a sign like this all right so fast forward four hours and a half You've arrived in Kalabaka. As you exit the train station or the bus like me, you will see several minibuses there and guys holding signs with all the names. Look for your name and then hop on the corresponding bus. Now, since at that point it's around 1 p.m., before heading to the monastery, you'll first have a 20 minute stop at this bakery slash restaurant. Just enough time to grab a bite, like a spinach pie, for instance, which is what I did and it was very tasty. Quick side note the tour does not include any meal or long restaurant break it's all happening kind of fast since a big chunk of the day is swallowed up by the time you need to get there so it's probably wise to pack a solid picnic plus a few cereal bars so that as soon as you feel a little hungry in between two monasteries you can have a bite to keep you energized speaking of monasteries there are three which you will visit the Varlam monastery the holy trinity monastery and the Saint Stephen Monastery. But I want you to understand something very important. The highlight of going to Meteora is not visiting the actual monastery. Because honestly, they just look like any other monastery or church you could see in Greece. The highlight of the tour are the views you will have throughout the entire day. I mean, look at this. So yeah, once you reach a monastery, instead of rushing inside the building immediately, take some time to look around, spot the other monasteries in the distance and admire the view at all these crazy rock formations. Also, in the minibus on the road from one monastery to the other, keep looking through the window because the scenery is stunning. Oh, and if you're wondering if there's a better side to sit on the bus, the answer is no because the bus will be driving back and forth on the same road, so both sides of the bus will get to see the same. And by the way, the bus doesn't just stop at the monasteries, it also makes a few photo stops on the way where you can take all the selfies you want. Concern Concerning the tour guide, you will hear all the stories while driving around, but don't be surprised, he will not enter any monasteries since tours are not allowed inside. So once you're inside, you're on your own. Is that a bad thing? 
I don't think so. It's very easy to find your way. Plus, the guide tells you everything you need to know before entering the monastery anyway. All right, now one very important point, the dress code. There are strict rules to enter the monastery. For men, no sleeveless shirts and no shorts. For women, same, but also no pants. Only long skirts are allowed. Now, the monasteries provide some of these temporary skirts like you see here, but they tend to run out during high season. So, ladies, I would suggest you carry a long skirt in your backpack, which you put on only when you're about to enter a monastery. And the rest of the time, wear shorts. Because, yeah, that's something I hadn't mentioned yet. Some monasteries require you to climb a significant amount of steps. And under the summer heat, this can get a little strenuous. So the lighter your clothes, the better. Same for guys. If you own one of these pants that can turn into shorts with a zipper, I'd definitely be wearing this on that trip. And something else, pack a spare t-shirt and maybe some socks in order not to be in your sweaty clothes for the long train ride back to Athens in the evening. Speaking of the ride back, you'll hop on the train around 6 p.m., meaning you'll be back in Athens around 10.30 in the night. All right, how much does all of this cost? Well, it's around 130 euros per person, plus three euros for each monastery you will enter. So the big question now, is it worth going? Well, in my opinion, it's a resounding yes. Of course, it is a long ride to get there, but the views are so unique. I mean, where else in the world will you see something like this? So yeah, in my opinion, you should absolutely do it. But in order to fully appreciate it, don't have a busy schedule on the day before that. You'll want to go to bed early to be nice and fresh when your alarm rings at 6.30. So I'm going to leave you down below the link to book this tour. And I'm also going to leave you a link to book this tour not as a day trip but as a two days trip which also includes Delphi so the way it goes is you're getting picked up by a minibus at your hotel in the morning and you go to Delphi first very historical place I'll make a video on it at some point so you spend a few hours there and then you head to Meteora you get there in the evening and by the way the accommodation is included in the package so you don't need to book a hotel on your own and then on the second day you drive around the area visiting the monasteries and all of that before heading back to Athens so such a tour costs around 230 euros per person, which is pretty much the same as if you were doing Meteora and Delphi separately. But the big difference is that you will spend much less time on the road, since Delphi is on the way to Meteora anyway. Plus, you have one hotel night in Meteora included in the price, so that's one less night to pay for in Athens. So yeah, this is a very nice package, but of course, if you're not that interested to see Delphi, or if you don't have that much time, then it's not for you. Oh, and one more thing thing, drones are technically not allowed, but this is not enforced at all. So if you have a drone, definitely take it with you because Meteora is the perfect spot for drone pictures. All right, I'm going to be releasing other videos on all the day trips you can go on from Athens and I'll be grouping them under this playlist here. And in this video here, I explain everything you need to know about visiting the Acropolis. And there you go. This is for today. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Bye.